Hey everyone, in this video we're going to cover some more kit bashing in 3D Coach by going over some of the tinker objects that you have available to you. When you go to the main page, you can go to the download section under resources, and you have brushes that you can download, masks, materials, shaders. In this case, click on other, and you have the tinker pack, you have some other models as well, or brushes that are available gears and so on but in this case we want to focus on the tinker package okay and when you click on this you'll notice you have a little thumbnail here that brings up an image of some of the objects that are available and this artist tinker has graciously donated a lot of sci-fi type of models into one big library that you can draw from and add them to your own library okay and you have another thumbnail here you also have some spline objects as well that will be repeated along a curve. Let's go back to the main page. And you may have seen some of the hard surface sculpting videos here from the main page. And it shows you some demonstrations of using these types of objects. Now, let's go ahead and see a practical example. I first want to mention that what you see in the models palette or the splines palette if you click on the tinker splines these will be replicated along the curve path if you use the curves tool okay in the models palette you can click on any one of these you can also drag and drop an object you may want to add by just hovering over the layer and when you see the little move icon, you can now just drag and drop it into the palette. And 3D Coat will create a thumbnail for you. All right, so what you see here is some of these objects have basically a secondary object here that's in a little bit of a green tint. And what that means is you're going to get this little cutout within the object that you are intersecting it with. So, for example, if I wanted to add maybe a turret or some type of a cannon, some piping or something like that, you can see how it's going to cut away. It has a cutter object that's going to intersect and cut out an opening for you and place that model inside. So let's go ahead and choose one of these cannons here to demonstrate. And so what I'm going to do is try and move this object in place. I'm going to check leave rotated axis so that when I rotate this the gizmo will maintain this orientation okay so I'll scale it down just a bit now I can't see much if it's free floating out here in space what's going to happen is if I leave it out in space like this the only thing that is going to be applied is this cannon all right, what you see, this little box, is the cutting object. Okay, it has a negative uh, space, and so what's going to happen is when you hit apply, 3D Code is actually going to use that to cut out this space uh, in your object if it intersects. So let's go ahead and push this in. And now, when it intersects, you can see the preview of the inner object. Okay, so let's say I want this cannon facing uh, outward just like this. I'm going to probably bring it out a bit. I'm going to rotate the object. Now let's say, for example, you saw this, but it's uh, flipped the wrong way. In this case, what I can do is, if I can see that I want to rotate, let's say, for example, 90 degrees or 180 degrees, one little uh, handy tip is to click and hold the little widget here. I can enter numeric values if I click and hold and then hit the space bar. I can now enter a 90 degree change okay 
So it looks about right, except I'm probably going to want to move it out a bit. And I think I'm okay with that, except I'm probably going to scale it down a bit, move it. All right, so I'm happy. I can now make sure I'm on the right layer that I want to cut out from and hit apply. Now again, if I did not want this to intersect and I just wanted to leave it out in space, I need to create a new layer to place it on. And I probably would want to give it enough resolution to capture whatever detail I see here. Okay, if it's a relatively simple object like this, I don't need that much resolution, but if I have a lot of details that I do want to keep, then probably want to make sure that layer is at least increased once or twice. A lot of it depends on the scale inside the scene. If it's very large in scale on the grid, uh, for example, this is a good happy medium. It's only taking up about maybe 15 to 25 percent of the grid and it's not too large, but the smaller the object, the more resolution you need to give the layer. So it looks like it's already done, and what you have whenever you're using the merge tool is it will leave you in the merge tool and it will leave this little preview object in place until you choose another tool. For demonstration purposes, this looks okay. And if you want to drag your own objects into one of these folders, let's say you've already got something of a library yourself, you can actually, from the Windows Explorer, you could just drag and drop straight from the Explorer into the palette. Your 3D Cut will create a thumbnail for you. Or you could simply just navigate to your Documents directory in 3D Coat. And under Vox Stamps, Okay, that will be your master folder for these types of objects. So the objects is the models palette. Splines is the splines palette. And as you can see, when I double click, uh, I have all these subdirectories that I could see in my drop list here. And I also can see thumbnails directly to the right side of the object. With the models palette, you can always go in if you so choose you can right click and rename an object so it's easier to see exactly what that is. Alright, so I hope that helps and have fun with it. Thank you.